Okay, so have you ever wanted to tell your boss how you really feel at work? <laughs> but like not get fired? Yeah. Uh, do you feel like you need to remind your colleagues about professional boundaries but aren't sure how to approach the subject? Joining us today is one of Canada's biggest TikTok stars who shows you how to do just that. Have a look. This is so nice. I love how much time we get to spend together now. Hey, can you put headphones in or something or just turn it down? I'm actually trying to do something. Why do you breathe like that? Can you stop? I don't know who needs to hear this, but your paycheck stays the same whether you spend your weekend thinking, worrying about work or not. Toodaloo. How do you professionally say, did you even try to find the answer to this before asking me? I encourage you to use the resources that you have access to prior to reaching out to me for support. followers. She's known as an advocate for young corporate workers. Welcome to the show, everyone's work bestie, Laura Willie. Hi, Laura. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being here, Laura. So listen, Laura, you have a business degree, you worked as an IT manager, then you started poking these videos yeah. that was making fun of corporate culture. Um, and that all happened kind of when the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think, my boss could see this and, and did they ever say anything? Yeah, you know, it's funny. Early on, I was, I would say actually my boss at the time and my coworkers were some of the first people to ever see my content. Like I was incredibly apparent about it or transparent about it from the beginning, just being like, hey, I'm posting this stuff. We'd talk about it in our meetings. Um, and so it was always, you know, a conversation that we would have. And I was always really mindful since the start to never create a video around a specific scenario that had happened that day at work. Mm. And there's never a character that could correlate directly with you know, a coworker of mine. So that boundary was put in place early and it, it worked really well. And yeah. I was met with so much support, which was amazing. So you tackle a variety of topics, including mm -hmm. how to speak more professional in a workplace setting yeah. to navigating professional boundaries. So why do you think your videos have connected so much with so many people? Yeah, I think there's a few things at play here. One, I feel like, you know, I was communicated growing up that work was such a taboo thing to talk about online. It's like, don't, don't bring it up, especially not on social media. And so I think that there wasn't a lot of content out there for that. So people were like, oh, this is fun. This is new. I can vent in this place. And then also posting at the beginning of the pandemics, for so many of us, we shifted to work from home. Like our entire work landscape had changed and we were so isolated. And I think that it built a sense of community for people to come to a place, see content and be like, I go through that too. Yeah. You know, I thought I was alone in this. And that really just built up the community over time. And the third thing is it's just kind of, you know, satisfactory to see like a sassy response about boundary setting with a coworker and just watching that through, you're just like, oh, that was, that was very satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, your content is obviously resonating with people because it's fun and informative, which means it's just good quality work. Thank you. And good quality work takes effort. Yes. So what does a day in your life, a content creator, look like? Yeah, you know what? I feel like there's not a lot of knowledge out there of what the, the day of an influencer content creator can look like. Yeah. And I will say, it's totally different for everyone. Everyone structures their business very differently. But if we were to look at like a basic day for me, I get mm -hmm. up and then I spend the whole morning, it's creative. That's like my creative time. So that could mean scripting, editing, filming. I do everything myself. So it just depends what I need that day. And then the afternoon, it's really a lot of emails and a lot of meetings. And then any business ventures you're working on independently of your content, um, that takes up most of the work day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, your videos, for people who watch them, you play a ton of different characters, some of which, maybe many of which, exaggerated <laughs> versions of people <laughs> out there. Um, but we don't necessarily, or do we get, like, who is the real Laura? Oh, the real Laura. Yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of a boundary I put in early on. Um, when I was around 30,000 followers, so at the start of my social media growth, I'd gotten engaged. And I had shared it on my social media, you know, as one does. And uh, there it is. <laughs> um, and I was met with so much judgment and negativity and messages. And that was kind of my first taste of, oh, okay, this is a new landscape for me. And so oh. my partner and I sat down that evening. And we were like, you know what? This is new territory. Let's understand a little bit more about what it looks like. Control the narrative of what you share online. Because once it's out there, it's out there forever. And since that point, it's kind of been social media and personal life. And I can choose to share what I want to share. Um, and it doesn't impact my content either way because it's not about me personally. So you often um, ask your community to share with you their best work experiences or mm -hmm. their uh, the advice that they've received. So what is the best work advice you've ever gotten? I love that question. Um, I would say it's become one of my guiding principles of my life. It's this idea that work is what you do. It is not who you are. And so kind of separating the identity, the self-worth from your job, because the reality is you could lose your job tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And once you're navigating a loss of job and grieving that, 
then you're also going through an identity crisis once you've tied so much of your worth to that. And so I would say that's something that I've just carried with me and will continue to carry with me um, throughout my life. Love that. Um, so your series, How Do You Professionally Say, it went viral on TikTok. And in it, uh, we, uh, you ask your coworker, who we can't see in the video, we can only hear the voice, mm -hmm. to help you rephrase things uh, that you'd really like to say uh, more professionally. So we thought we'd play this game with you, okay? Are you yeah. ready for this? Oh yeah. We're each gonna uh, ask you to say something and then you have to tell us the better way to say it, basically. <laughs> okay. Got that? Okay, got it. Okay. So how do you professionally say, I'm not staying late to deal with this? Oh, uh, my work day concludes at five, but I will prioritize this first thing tomorrow. Okay, all right, oh. very good. Okay. Oh, I love that a lot. Yeah. How that do you professionally down. say, stay in your lane? Ooh, uh, thanks for your input. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> But also, like, you know, plausible di deniability mm -hmm. is built into that. You can't yeah. really get nailed for that. No. No. Okay. How do you professionally say, that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that falls within your scope of responsibility, but I'm happy to support where it makes sense. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is such a like a diss, and I don't know how to recover. I know. <laughs> I was like, I does know. it make the recipient of that even angry, like angrier? Because it is very, it is professional, but also. But that's little... the only part you're hearing. You didn't yeah. hear the first part, so you're like, oh, this sounds pleasant. Okay, okay, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Or oh, wait, not. can I throw a last one at you? But yeah. it's mm -hmm. not a question. It's more about like, you prefer face to face, email, uh, or yeah, face to face, or email or phone. Depends what we're doing. If we're, if it's like a brainstorm kind of meeting and you're really trying to get to the bottom line, face to face, 100%, you can okay. read body language. Um, yeah. I'm not a phone though, oh my gosh, don't call me. <laughs> if you message me and you need something, like don't pick that phone up, I will not answer that call. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> we had that discussion on the show before. Laura, this was so fun. Nice to get to know you in this Thank way. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we'll be right back, we'll be right back. Hey there, wasn't that great? Do you know where you can find some equally good content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with discussions, debates, and some laughs. Head there now, like and subscribe.